push it a little harder, like make people up. Good morning. Welcome Vintage Church North and welcome to Orphan Sunday here at Vintage Church North. Uh, what is Orphan Sunday? Uh, you're going to hear a little bit more about that today. Uh, Jessica Huey is going to kind of walk you through what that is. Uh, but we're excited this morning that you are here with us. Uh, my name's Jordan. I'm one of the pastors here at Vintage North. Uh, we're so glad that you're with us, um, whether that's here in person in the gymnasium at Trinity Academy or those of you who are on Facebook Live this morning. Uh, we're so glad that you're able to be with us. Uh, we at Vintage are a church of doubters, seekers, and followers, and we exist to make much of Jesus. We do this by being disciples of Jesus who make disciples. What that means this morning is whether this is your first week with us or you've been worshiping with us since we launched back in 2013, you absolutely belong with us here this morning. It's no accident you're with us. It's no accident that you're joining us. If you're new, know that there is space for you to belong here. There is space for your doubts and questions. There's space for the messiness of your life. I know this because I've found that there's been space here for the messiness of my life. We serve a God who has made all of us outsiders into beloved children. And we'd love to invite you into that this morning. Um, I'd also love to invite you to do what we call sticking six here at Vintage Church North. And, and what that means is give us six weeks uh, from now until December 13th. Give us six weeks for us to get to know you, for you to get to know us. Uh, maybe check out one of our community groups. We have community groups that are meeting all digitally. We have community groups that are meeting socially distanced and in safe ways in person now. Uh, maybe check out Wednesday morning prayer at 7 a.m. Uh, we believe that in six weeks, you'll find there's definitely space for you here. Um, and this is a place that you can belong and call home. This morning, our call to worship comes from Psalm 68, verses 4 through 6. If you wouldn't mind, stand with me this morning for our call to worship. Psalm 68 says, Sing to God, sing praises to his name. Lift up a song to him who rides through the deserts. His name is the Lord. Exult before him. Father of the fatherless and protector of widows is God in his holy habitation. God settles the solitary in a home. He leads out the prisoners to prosperity, but the rebellious dwell in a parched land. Let's sing and worship this father to the fatherless this morning. God, we turn our attention to you this morning, God. 
we lay down our weeks, past week, our future week, all of our thoughts and concerns, God, we place down to draw our attention to you. There's nothing worth more that could ever come close. No thing can compare. You're our living hope. Your presence, Lord. And I've tasted and seen of the sweetest of
Each week, we pause for a few moments during this part of our service. While we are singing and worshiping, we catch a glimpse of how far we have fallen from God's holiness, righteousness, and justice. Like a man looking in a mirror, we can clearly see how we've missed the mark, how our hearts have turned away from the Father who has adopted us as his own. In response, in this moment, we confess these sins to our loving Father. In this moment, we also rejoice that God the Father sent his son Jesus and that through his perfect life, death on a brutal cross and resurrection from the dead on the third day, our sins are freely forgiven if we turn away from our sins and put our trust and faith in Jesus. This morning, take a few moments to confess your sins before God. Take a few moments to rest your broken and weary hearts and this promise of forgiveness for all those who have faith in Jesus Christ. Merciful God, in your presence this morning, we confess our sinfulness, our shortcomings, and our offenses against you. You alone, God, know how often we have sinned and wandering from your ways and wasting or worshiping your gracious gifts and forgetting your extravagant love. Have mercy on us, Lord, for we are ashamed and sorry for all we have done against you. Forgive our sins and help us to live in your light and walk in your ways. In the name of Jesus Christ, our Savior, amen. Vintage Church Romans 8.15 says, For you, you, Vintage Church North, did not receive the spirit of slavery to fall back into fear, but you have received the spirit of adoption as sons by whom we cry, Abba, Father. If you have placed your faith in Jesus Christ this morning, you are freely and joyfully forgiven and adopted as beloved sons and daughters of our Most High God. Uh, at this time, uh, we like to welcome each other um, in this socially distant setting. Maybe do it with a wave of, or a long distance hug. Uh, if you're online, maybe through a comment or a text message to someone this morning. Uh, but let's take some time to welcome each other.
Y'all can be seated. this back down from Jordan. He gave me the heads up. He moved my microphone. So as Jordan already told you guys, today is what is known around the globe as Orphan Sunday. And that's what I'm going to talk to you guys a little bit about this morning. Um, Orphan Sunday is something that started about 15 years ago in Zambia. Um, actually, one of my dear, dear friends, uh, Gary Schneider and Sanderson Sangina. Sanderson actually came to our church. You guys may have seen him a couple years ago. He came with our family to, to visit Vintage Church while he was in the States. And the original concept that they had was to take eight orphans in Zambia and pair them with a widow and build a family. Um, because we know through research that kids thrive in families. Um, and that's the, that's the idea of fostering and adopting, that kids belong in families, and that's how they're going to grow. And um, then there was a sweet church in Texas that said, hmm, that's a super great concept, orphans and widows, but where is the church? Um, our church is filled with people who are blessed and understand the family unit and don't struggle to meet our basic needs and know Jesus. Why are our hands and feet not helping the orphan and the widow instead of setting up the orphan and widow to help each other? And we, churches across the globe said, yeah, that's right, let's do this. So they started Orphan Sunday in the capacity that it is today. So every year on the second Sunday in November is Orphan Sunday. It's also World Adoption Day. You may have seen in years past, people write a little smiley face on their hand and hold it up. That just means that they're waiting on their child to come home, a family that's adopting. Um, so what does that mean for Vintage Church? I think it means a lot for us, but I'm going to get to that in a second. I want to tell you, that's a little bit about Orphan Sunday. I'm going to tell you a little bit about our family and our journey, and then I want to encourage you. 
I'm gonna try to make it quick so you aren't here all day. So Michael and I and Emily in that area, everyone's a shadow, they're over there. Um, we decided many years ago that adoption was something for our family. When Emily was just a baby, I was a teacher for many, many years. I spent summers in Southeast Asia and Africa teaching and saw kids in need all over the world. And so God spoke to my heart in that way and spoke to Michael's heart in that way. And we said, yeah, we wanna do this thing. We want to adopt our son. And so four years ago, we sent off our literal five pounds of paperwork and we waited and we waited and we waited and we waited a really long time. And we found out like a little over a month ago that we were finally matched with our son. His name is Alpha. They've got a picture of this handsome man. Just wait, there he is. Alpha James will be coming home hopefully in the spring. Y'all can pray about that. Um, they just actually announced that they reopened airports for families to go to Burundi. Our son is from Burundi, which is just south of Rwanda. Um, so hopefully in the spring, we're gonna go get that little man and we're gonna bring him home to our family. Um, so pray for Alpha, pray for our family, pray for that journey. Um, now I wanna encourage you guys because I feel really, really strongly about orphans and adoption and foster care. That's something that's on my heart, but I don't feel like it's something that has to be on your heart or your heart. I don't feel like every family in here should go and start the adoption journey today. I just don't. I don't think that everyone should start the foster care journey today. Um, but I do think that we should be doing something. And we've been in a season, Vintage North has been in a season for years now of building ourselves up to serve, know, live, advance the gospel. That was years ago. And then we spent a ton of time building ourselves up through emotionally healthy spirituality so that we could go and serve. And now we've had a whole year and our sweatpants to just simmer on all of that. And I feel like it's time to go. It's time to take the sweatpants off. It's time to figure out what God has called you to do in this time. And if that is orphan care, Michael, Huey, and I want to walk in that journey with you. We want to help you fill out your paperwork. We want to talk to you about what that looks like, the ins, the outs, the ups, the downs. We want to be a lifeline to you guys for that. If that's not what is speaking to you today, I want to encourage you. We have multiple ministries in the advance team that we built really strong relationships with, with Step Up, with Note in the Pocket, Refugee Hope Partners, and Safe Families. And all of those ministries speak to the foreigner, the homeless, the orphan, the widow, that we're called to be serving. And we're not, <laughs> dun, dun, dun. we're not. We are staying at home in our PJs, loving our comfort, loving our safety, staying in our bubble when we're being called to serve. And I feel like the time is now. I hope that the hype video got you hyped up. Maybe not to adopt, but if it is, I will rejoice with you that that is what's for your family. But I wanna challenge you guys today at lunch to say, what is for our family? I don't think it's go to church on Sunday and decide where to go to lunch. It's more than that. And if you don't know what it is, I wanna help you. I know Jeff would wanna help you if you're interested in Step Up. I know that there are people out there that want to get you connected. I want to meet you for coffee, ice cream. I'm always in, you can find me at Two Roosters or Mods. I live at those two places. I want to talk to you about what that looks like for you and your family. And I hope this gets you jazzed up to serve the Lord. Okay, that's it. So now I'm going to change hats and we're going to stand for the reading of God's word. So we're in Isaiah 56, verses 1 through 8 today. Ooh, they have it on the screen. You guys are pros. You guys are pros. 
I'm going to read it from the Bible then. Thus says the Lord, keep justice and do righteousness, for soon my salvation will come and my righteousness be revealed. Blessed is the man who does this and the son of man who holds it fast, who keeps the Sabbath, not profaning it, and keeps his hand from doing any evil. Let not the foreigner who has joined himself to the Lord say, the Lord will surely separate me from his people. And let not the eunuch say, behold, I am a dry tree, for thus says the Lord. To the eunuchs who keep my Sabbath, who choose the things that please me and hold fast to my covenants, I will give in my house and within my walls a monument and a name better than the sons and daughters. I will give them an everlasting name that shall not be cut off. And the foreigners who join themselves to the Lord to minister to them, to, the love, to love the name of the Lord and to be his servants. Everyone who keeps the Sabbath does not profane it and holds fast my covenant. These I will bring to my holy mountain and make them joyful in my house of prayer. Their burnt offerings and their sacrifices will be accepted on my altar. For my house shall be called a house of prayer for all peoples. The Lord God who gathers the outcasts of Israel declares, I will gather yet others to him besides those already gathered. It's the word of the Lord. You guys may be seated. I'm going to switch hats one more time too. So now kids, if you are age two through fifth grade, you're going to go to the light, to the back. The Peter, Kus Peter Kuski should be back there. They're gonna take you outside. So migrate that way, I'm gonna follow you over there. Thanks, Jess. Mass Exodus. Well, good morning, Vintage Church North. My name is Jared Trumbo. I'm one of the pastors here. Uh, it is a delight to be with you uh, today, especially today, this, this Orphan Sunday. Uh, my wife and I uh, worked at an orphanage for a few years in China. So this is, this is, a, this is an issue that's, that's very dear to our hearts. Uh, there, was, there was one time where we, me and Shiloh and, and two young children and one six-month-old child uh, got in an RV and we were driving around the, the country for about six weeks with, with nine kids from our orphanage in China in this bus and we were, sleeping in, we were sleeping in an RV and they were sleeping in churches and in host houses and we were going to churches and they were... Uh, our kids were trained in, in performing arts, so they did, they did these dances and, and raised support for the orphanage, for the ministry. And there was one time where uh, uh, Christian, Christian Alliance for Orphans had a summit in Louisville, and there was like, I don't know, there's like 5,000 people at this very large church in Louisville, and there was this, this dance that we did, and uh, the, the song was about, uh, with the Lord, with Jesus, there are no orphans. Uh, he came, as Jordan read in the liturgy, to, to be the father to the fatherless. And they would do this, this dance, and since I was the, since I was the adult uh, uh, leading the tour, I, I was the Jesus character in this, in this play, and I would sneak around to the back of the auditorium, they'd do this dance, and then Grace, was her English name, would take Thomas's head, and, and at the end of the song, she would lift up his head and point to... Uh, to, to Jesus, who was me in a robe, and uh, he would run down the aisle and, and give me a hug. And I told Thomas, I was like, Thomas, let's make this cooler. When you run, I want you to run, and I want you to jump as high as you can, and I'll catch you, and then I'll carry you on stage. And uh, every, I mean, we did this thing for, for eight weeks, and we did it everywhere, and every single time, I, I just couldn't, I just couldn't hold back the emotion of tears walking down the aisle, holding Thomas. And usually at that time, the, the crowd is, is cheering as well. And, and then walking on stage, um, and I kind of had my back to the audience for a minute so I could compose myself before I turned around. Um, but, but that picture of Thomas, who was, who was a 10-year-old who was, who was abandoned, 
Uh, the picture of him running into the arms of Jesus and just full on jumping and wrapping his arms around Jesus and Jesus holding him and carrying him and walking him up stage. That's the picture that I want us to, to have in our minds as we look at Isaiah 56, as we look at this chapter in the Old Testament where, uh, where God is saying, where the Lord is saying, the outcasts are welcome, the outcasts are welcome into my house. My house will be called a house of prayer for all nations. And maybe you've, maybe you've read that or maybe you've read the Old Testament and you've, and you've thought, this Old Testament sounds really Israel-centric. It sounds really like God chose these people and, uh, and, and everything is about them and he gives them his law. And, and, and why, why is this small little dot on the map what God's all about for thousands of years and then finally Jesus came and, and the rest of the world got included? I, I would tell you that that's, uh, that's a very faulty reading of the Old Testament. Indeed, that's a faulty interpretation and a faulty understanding of the heart of God. And, and, and I'll explain that to you this way. Uh, God's heart has always been for the ends of the earth. In fact, when God created Adam and Eve, he gave them two commands. He said, don't eat that fruit. We know that one. But he also said, be fruitful and multiply. Fill the earth. Why? Because God wanted his glory to fill the earth. God wanted himself to be worshiped in all the earth. Uh, so then there, there's a flood. Uh, it says the, 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 the sinfulness of man uh, was such that, that there, was, there was a flood and, and God destroyed uh, all of creation except for those that were by his grace saved in the boat. Uh, and then when Noah came off the boat as the water as the water went down, God gave that same command to Noah. He said, fill the earth. Be fruitful and multiply. Why? Because God wanted his glory to fill every nook and cranny of, of the earth. And then we see the strange story in Genesis where uh, these people come together in this city and they, and they build this tower. Maybe you've, maybe you've heard it called the Tower of Babel. And maybe you've even heard the interpretation that uh, God struck them and confused their language because they were trying to build a tower that was tall enough to get to heaven. They're trying to do it on their own. No, that, that's wrong. Their, their, their sinfulness was God told them, fill the earth and subdue it. And they said, no. We're just going to stay right here. And then God chose Abraham. God chose Abraham, why? To be the father of his people, of his chosen people. Yes, that is true. But why? So that, read what it says in Genesis 12, 2, and 3. It says, this is God talking to Abraham. I will make you a great nation. I will bless you and make your name great. This is God talking about Abraham and Israel so that you will be a blessing. I will bless those who bless you, and him who dishonors you I will curse. And in you, all the families of the earth shall be blessed. God chose Israel to be a blessing to the ends of the earth, to all families on earth. His plan for, for Israel was, as it says in Isaiah 49, 6, I will make you as a light for the nations, that my salvation may reach to the ends of the earth. This is just God repeating what he told to Adam and Eve in the garden. This was always God's heart. And then we see the incarnation, the birth of Jesus. God became flesh that first Christmas morning. For what purpose? When John the Baptist saw Jesus, he said, Behold, the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. That Lamb of God was, was crucified to take away the sin of the world, uh, resurrected, and, and as Jesus left, the, the parting words he gave to his disciples were, therefore, go into all nations. I tell you the truth. When the Spirit comes on you, you will receive power, and you will be my witnesses in Jerusalem, Judea, Samaria, and to the ends of the earth. This was not a new commission. As Jesus departed and, and, and birthed his church, 
It wasn't a new commission. It wasn't God giving them, okay, I'm changing things up now. This was God's heart from creation. This was God's plan for Israel. This was God, God's plan for the church. It's always been. And we're gonna see the culmination of that in Revelation 7, 9. When John sees a vision of heaven, it says, after this I looked and behold a great multitude that no one could number from every nation, from all tribes and peoples and languages standing before the throne and before the lamb, clothed in white robes with palm branches in their hands. The culmination of God's heart for the nations is for eternity the nations will be worshiping the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. And it will be just and it will be right because of what Jesus has done. And because Jesus himself said, whoever believes in me will not perish, but have everlasting life. And so because of that, no one, but no one can say, uh, this, this promise is not for me. This passage that, that Jessica read for us talks about the foreigner and the eunuch. Two groups of people that absolutely would have felt like, and this chapter even tells us so, they would have felt like the outcasts of Israel. So again, as a review, we're in the book of Isaiah. Isaiah lived uh, six or 700 years before the birth of Jesus uh, on Christmas morning. And Isaiah was a prophet. Isaiah talked a lot about justice. Here he talks about justice for the foreigner and for the eunuch. The Old Testament talks a lot about the foreigner, the foreigner being uh, he or she who is not Israel, those who were not descendants of Abraham. And the law says, uh, the law that God gave to Israel says a lot about how to deal with the foreigner. And there were some, there were some exclusions, but here's what the law does say about, is, about how Israel is to deal with, uh, the Bible word is Gentile, anyone who's not Israel, anyone who's not a descendant of Abraham. It says in Leviticus 19, 34, the foreigners residing among you must be treated as native born. Love them as yourself. Why? Because you were foreigners in Egypt. You know what it's like. You, 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 you've been there. I am the Lord your God. Foreigners were, as long as they, as long as they submitted to the law, as long as they followed uh, the rules, uh, which by the way, as long as they they considered themselves part of the covenant, that sign of the covenant being circumcision, hello, do you really wanna be a part? As long as they followed the rules, they were included in the festivals. And even if they didn't follow the rules, and if, even if they didn't uh, obey the law, the, the Old Testament still says the foreigner was to be included in the distribution of alms. As they were to take care of the poor, they were also to take care of the foreigner. God's plan from the beginning. All nations on earth will be blessed by the descendants of Abraham. But what happened was Israel missed the point, as we often do. They became completely and totally ethnocentric. God chose us. God gave us his law. We're the only ones that are doing it right. And so they ignored the rest of the world. And, and even to the point where, we're gonna fast forward a little bit. Uh, the book of Acts, I'm so excited uh, coming away from, from Easter in 2021. We're gonna spend a good bit of time in the book of Acts. Cornelius was a Gentile, lived in Israel. Uh, Peter was, was one, of the, one of the disciples of Jesus. So Acts tells us the story of the birth of the, of the early church after Jesus left, gives them his Holy Spirit, the church is birthed. Um, so the first eight or nine chapters of the book of Acts and the birth of the church, they're only in Israel. They're still in Jerusalem, they're still trying to figure it out, their persecution starts to happen, and actually it's the persecution that finally gets them scattered, but uh, God reveals himself to Peter in a vision, and, and these animals come down, there were some animals according to the Old Testament law that they couldn't eat because they were unclean, and God tells Peter, don't, don't, don't consider anything I have made to be, to be unclean, and so uh, God also speaks to Cornelius, 
And Peter goes to Cornelius' house. Again, Peter is a non-Jew. Peter, or, sorry, Cornelius is, is a Gentile. Peter goes into Cornelius' house, shares the gospel. These people come to Jesus. But before that, uh, Peter says this. He's, he, here's what he says to Cornelius and to these, to these foreigners. Peter said to them, you yourselves know how unlawful it is for a Jew to associate with or to visit anyone of another nation. But God has shown me that I should not call any person common or unclean. There's a really, really good chance that that was the first time in Peter's life as an adult that he had ever gone into the home of a Gentile. God's law does not say what Peter says, uh, that is unlawful for a Jew to associate with anyone from another nation. We just saw what God's heart is for the nation. We just saw what God's word said about the foreigner. So Israel, in their ethnocentrism, in their us first mentality, they missed the point. The eunuch, uh, a eunuch is a castrated male. Uh, I guess we can talk about this since all the kids are gone this morning. Uh, Deuteronomy 23, part of God's law. Deuteronomy 23 says that any eunuch uh, is forbidden from the assembly of the Lord. So this isn't some law that, that the Israelites made up to, to exclude people they didn't like. This, 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 was, this was God's law. Um, as one created in, in God's image, male and female, he created them, it tells us in Genesis, uh, this would have been a, a violation of, of God's creation. This would have been a violation of those created in the image of God. And the technicalities of this law, there's a, there's a really good chance that this was probably uh, considered a, a temporary law as, uh, as when God gave them his law, they were still wandering the desert like this infantile nation that was gonna be birthed into this great nation. Uh, here's, here's what you need to know up front. But either way, the eunuch would have felt like the outcast of Israel. The foreigner didn't matter how well they knew God's word, the foreigner would have been considered and would have felt like an outcast in Israel. So God wants to speak here in this chapter to these two groups of people, the foreigner and the eunuch. Today's Orphan Sunday. Uh, this was actually, as I was, I was one, of the, one of the guys that helped craft this sermon series. This is a total accident that this passage is Orphan Sunday, but, but God, is, God is sovereign. Uh, because is there any other people group in the world that would feel more cast off than the orphan? Than, than those in, in foster care. There, there are 140 million orphans in the world. There are 400,000 kids in America in foster care. Just so you can make an equivalency, uh, there are just about 400,000 churches in America. If justice, the, the, the definition that we've been working on during this series is, is giving all people what they are due, Today's sermon could have a million different applications, but one of them is going to be this. The Lord God gathers the outcasts. That's who God is. That's what he does. That's what, that's what he's always done. And we, his church, we have to be a part of that mission. And I, I can think of no more practical or tangible living out of that mission than adoption or foster care as, as Jessica talked about earlier. So, Isaiah 56, verse one says this. Thus says the Lord, keep justice and do righteousness. For soon my salvation will come and my righteousness will be revealed. It talks about salvation in the Old Testament and one of the questions that, that, that I often ask is, what did it take for someone to be saved 
before the cross of Jesus Christ. And I ask that question to test people a lot and to kind of begin a larger conversation of God's plan for salvation. And I often get answers like, uh, well, you have to be a descendant of Abraham. Okay, so that excludes the foreigner. I don't know if that's right. Uh, well, and if you, just because you were born a descendant of Abraham does not in any way mean that you trust in the Lord. Um, circumcision is the sign of the covenant, so that was, uh, or sacrifice, following the sacrificial law, or um, obeying the law, because the law was a whole lot bigger than just sacrifice. Well, I would say that all of those things are, are works. That's something you do. That's something you do. That's something you do. Circumcision, sacrifice, obedience to the law. That is, that is salvation by works. And you and I would say that no, salvation is not by works. Salvation is by faith through, because of the grace of, of Jesus Christ. And I would say the Old Testament is the same as it is for you and I. If you were to ask me, what must I do to be saved? Believe in the Lord Jesus Christ and you will be saved. If you put your faith and your trust in, in God as he has revealed himself in Isaiah's day, you would, you would be saved. And I would say the same thing to you sitting here and to you online. Uh, if you put your faith in Jesus because of his grace, you will be saved. And so what does that have to do here in this passage with specifically the eunuch and the foreigner? Well, eunuchs, we already mentioned, they would have felt excluded. They would have read God's law and they would have said, that's not for me. And if they would have read Isaiah 56 and they would have read these words, to the eunuchs who keep my Sabbaths, who choose the things that please me and hold fast my covenant, I will give in my house and within my walls a monument and a name better than sons and daughters. I will give them an everlasting name that shall not be cut off. Talks in there about keeping Sabbath. Sabbath is such a perfect picture of salvation by faith. What is Sabbath? Sabbath is, 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 is a, it's a living parable. If I take a day and I rest and I don't work and I do nothing, it's a, it's a picture, it's a symbol of us telling the Lord, I can't do it, God, you have to provide for me. I can't provide for myself. I'm going to rest and I'm gonna rest trusting in faith in the fact that Lord God, you are gonna provide for me. You're gonna take care of me. The eunuchs, it says here, choose the things that please me and hold fast my covenant. Hold fast my promise. The eunuchs, if they do this, if they hold fast the covenant of the Lord, the result is the Lord will give them an everlasting name that shall not be cut off. You, you need to know this about about the Israelites. They were infatuated with lineage. And maybe that goes back to the be fruitful and multiply stuff. But I mean, if you read, uh, if you read the beginning of Matthew and if you read the beginning of Luke, they, they write out the lineage of Jesus from the beginning. Hey, here's how Jesus was a descendant of Abraham. And, and they could go all the way back. They were obsessed with lineage. A eunuch has no part in that. A eunuch's name will end with them because they cannot reproduce. And, and, and what God is saying to the eunuch here in Isaiah 56 is, is the most beautiful thing they would ever have heard. I will give you an everlasting name that shall not be cut off. I will give in my house a monument and a name better than sons and daughters. If you hold on to my covenant, yes, my covenant is for you, God is saying, I will give you an everlasting name. The kindness of the Lord in this chapter would have been the sweetest thing a unit could have ever heard. 
The foreigners would have also felt excluded. They would have felt like outcasts. And these words are for them, verse six. And the foreigners who join themselves to the Lord to minister to him, to love the name of the Lord and to be his servants. Everyone who keeps the Sabbath and does not profane it and holds fast my covenant, these I will bring to my holy mountain and make them joyful in my house of prayer. Their burnt offerings and their sacrifices will be accepted on my altar. Imagine how sweet and beautiful those words would have been to the foreigner who would have felt excluded, outcast, many of them in their own, in their own home. Join yourselves to the Lord. Love the name of the Lord. Be his servants. Keep the Sabbath. If you do, you will be welcomed to the Lord's holy mountain. You will be made joyful. You will be brought into a relationship with the Lord. That's what it it means when it says, I I will hear your prayers. I I will accept your sacrifices at my altar. The Lord is telling the foreigner, you are welcome here. He says, verse seven, uh, these I will bring to my holy mountain. These, the foreigners, the eunuch, I will bring to my holy mountain and make them joyful in my house of prayer. For my house shall be called a house of prayer for all peoples. I was thinking about this based on a conversation that we had in our woke church discussion last Sunday night, uh, is there any other institution in the world that unites all people on equal ground? If you know me, the first thing I thought about was soccer, football. Uh, the, the world loves this game. You know, like half, half the world's population will watch the World Cup final. Um, it, Everybody plays by the same rules on the same dimension pitch with the same ball and weight. And, except that if you are a soccer fan, if you follow global soccer at all, you know it does anything but unite people. Uh, the hatred and the vitriol uh, that you see in the stands, where if you see the, the fans of one, of one nation or one club team here, you will see a line of green shirts, which are the security guards standing in the aisle, separating them from the other fans. No, it's, it's not that. Uh, well, it has to be the United Nations, right? Uh, the United Nations, which was created to bring the whole world together, together so that we could all, except that Taiwan doesn't recognize China, and China doesn't even recognize Taiwan, and North Korea doesn't even recognize that South Korea is a part of the United Nations, and South Korea doesn't even recognize that North Korea is a part of the United Nations, and it's always changing, and it's, it's anything but unifying. The one thing that I could think of was, was fried chicken. My brother calls fried chicken the most universally beloved food uh, that, that there is. Um, even, if, even if you are a vegetarian or a vegan, fried chicken is the one thing that makes you wish you weren't a vegetarian or a vegan. And even if you're like one of those I don't eat fried foods type things, when you cheat, I know the thing that you cheat with is fried chicken. I wrote this when I was fasting this week. Did you guys catch that at all? Side note, on that, this is in my notes. On that same tour where we had, uh, where we had uh, the kids from China in our, in our bus and we were driving around, we went to a, we, a church hosted us in inner city Cincinnati. And it was uh, almost an entirely black church. And, and, and there was a lady there that made fried chicken and she had uh, her grandma's recipe or something. And it was to see these elderly, these elderly African-American women and these 10-year-old Chinese orphans sitting at the ta- same table just in heaven eating fried chicken. It was a picture of heaven. I mean, a literal picture of heaven. I think that's what we're gonna be doing in heaven. But the church... The church of Jesus Christ is the one thing where the entire world, people from every tribe, every nation, every language are unified under the banner of Jesus Christ and are given equal footing 
where we can call ourselves brothers and sisters with people that we share nothing else in common with, except for probably a taste for fried chicken. I've been blessed uh, with the opportunity to pray and worship with brothers and sisters in Christ all over the world. Uh, I've worshiped to the merengue beat in the Dominican Republic uh, hours after the electricity gave out. Uh, I've worshiped in jungles in Guatemala where there's, there's a roof and, and no walls. Uh, I've worshiped in a hundreds of years old church in Denmark where I knew not the songs nor the language. Uh, but knew very well the Jesus that we were worshiping together. I've prayed with, with Chinese pastors and, and a newly born again sister in Christ who was using uh, the bathtub in our master bedroom as a baptistry. I've worshiped in the southern hemisphere with Chilean brothers and sisters uh, who, were, when, when the time we departed uh, from each other, we all knew that the next time that we would see each other would be worshiping together for eternity at, at, at the, the foot of the throne of Jesus Christ. We'd all been together welcomed into the fellowship of believers. Serving Jesus, loving his name, holding fast to his covenant. This was God's plan from the beginning, guys. And this is God's heart for all eternity. And this is God's heart for his church, for you and for me. Conditioned, they joined themselves to the Lord. They held fast to his covenant. But, in, but inclusive, my house is your house, you're welcome here. Here's the beautiful part about Isaiah 56, for me and hopefully for you. You and I are written into this chapter of scripture. Verse eight says, the Lord God who gathers the outcasts of Israel declares, I will gather yet others to him besides those already gathered. See, the reality is both in, in, in this in this geographical, national context, you and I are, we're the foreigner. We are the Gentile. The one about whom uh, verse eight is written, I will gather yet others besides those already gathered. That, that's you, that's me. That's true geopolitically, but that's also true spiritually. Uh, our, our sin has made us the outcasts. And because of what Jesus has done, he, he brought us in. Look at the beauty of the language used by Paul. Jesus didn't just make a way and, and send an invitation and say, hey guys, uh, the door is open if you're interested. Romans 8, 14. The verse Jordan already read this morning. For all who are led by the spirit of God are sons of God. For you did not receive the spirit of slavery to fall back into fear, but you have received the spirit of adoption as sons and daughters by whom we cry, Abba, Father. Adopted, chosen in him, Ephesians 1, verse 5 says, in love he predestined us for adoption to himself as sons through Jesus Christ according to the purpose of his will, to the praise of his glorious grace with which he has blessed us in the beloved. He didn't just leave the door open and make a way. He chose us in him before the foundation of the world. He didn't just change the rules and say, okay, yeah, now you can come in. In love, he adopted There's a million uh, different applications we could draw out of Isaiah 56 and apply to, to us. The series has been about the kingdom of justice and this passage is about the ultimate justice that is actually not really justice at all, it's grace. That, that we who were, who were outcast, that we were outcast by our own choosing because of our own sin, Jesus died and was resurrected so that we could be brought in, so that we could be welcomed, so that we could be given a name that is better than sons and daughters.
For all who, who believe in him, to them he gave the power to be children of God. That's, that's the ultimate picture of justice in this Kingdom of Justice series. His church is to be called a house of prayer, a house of prayer for all nations. I would invite you, uh, I don't know if you could, I'm putting you on the spot, Brad or Jeff, uh, I would invite you to join us uh, at 7 o'clock a.m. on Wednesday mornings. We, we join together, currently we're still on Zoom. Uh, there, there's a link, if you just go to vintagenc.com slash north, you'll find, you'll find the link there. Join us as we pray. We, we, we pray for our church. We, we read a psalm, uh, we sit in it for a little while, and, and we pray, and we pray for the nations, we pray for our neighbors, we pray for, for you, we pray for those of you who are online. We pray for, for those in the triangle who are not yet with us, who are not yet followers of Jesus, that, that, that the Holy Spirit would, would move in their lives. If God's desire for his church is for it to be a house of prayer for all nations, join us uh, on Wednesdays at 7 a.m. Pray with us. Uh, another, another application is, is I, I know it's, it's a long shot, but I never know who is, who is watching or who is listening. Um, this is obviously a very exciting passage for foreign missions. Is God calling you and you need to be obedient to that? Who's going? Uh, and if anybody stands up for that, then just like the adoption and foster care, we as a church are gonna say, we, we will do everything we can to make it happen. Maybe you're here and, and you're a doubter or a seeker. Maybe you've even felt, or maybe the church has even done something to make you feel outcast or excluded. I would say a few things. You're welcome here. Because of what Isaiah 56 tells us, you're, you're welcome here. Jesus loves you. Uh, you need to join yourself to him. And let us not, church, let us not uh, become Israel or become like Peter, uh, who took the law to mean that he couldn't relate or dine with those who didn't look like him think like him, believe like him, vote like him. May Isaiah 56 inform the way that we live our lives, inform the way that we love this city, inform the way that we love the world. We talked a couple weeks ago about, uh, about some, some long-term goals that Vintage Church has. We talked about uh, our, our desire to, in the next 20 years, to, to launch, to incubate, and to send out, to love and to bring justice to our city, 20 nonprofits. Uh, one of the other, uh, other, uh, other long-term goals is uh, we, we as a church, we wanna, we wanna double down on Jesus. What that means is we have a desire this year as a church to see, um, I don't know, goals have to be smart, right? So you gotta put a number on them. We have a desire to see uh, and record 250 significant decisions that our people have made to serve Jesus, to, to get out of their comfort zones, to step out in faith. Uh, I, think we could, I think we could certainly put adoption on that list. If you're called to foreign missions and you'd say today, yeah, I wanna follow Jesus to the ends of the earth, we could certainly put that on this list. But, but it's, it's the small things as well. Maybe, maybe you would say, um, for the first time in my life, I've, I've been tithing. Or maybe you would say, uh, you know, based on your challenge last week, for the first time in my life, I decided to, to fast and pray from lunch this week. Uh, if that was you if, if you, if you joined me in a, in a lunch fast this week, I'd love to hear about it. I know that, uh, that, that the New Testament says a lot about, you know, don't let your left hand know what your right hand is doing and that. I'm not gonna share it with anybody. Uh, I just think it would be, I just think it would be good for us to encourage each other in that. Um, so if, if the Lord revealed himself to you or showed you something uh, or led you to do something in that time, I'd love to hear about it. Again, I'm not gonna send it out in a newsletter. Um, I just... If nothing else, it would be encouraging for my soul. 
We as a church need to be about uh, seeking justice because that's God's heart. Welcoming the outcast, bringing the homeless poor into your house. That was, that was last week. Again, what more tangible application is there than, than adoption or, or foster care? Why? Because we, we, as followers of Jesus, we have been adopted because of the grace of Jesus Christ. So, so church, I know that's kind of a, a specific application, but we need to serve the Lord. We need to seek him. I, 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 didn't, I didn't prompt Jessica in her, in her strong words as she was standing up here, um, but it's absolutely true. I've been guilty of, well, let's just wait till this, thi- all, this thing all sh- shakes out. Uh, the reality is those that are most negatively impacted by both the virus and the shutdown uh, are those who uh, are the most destitute. So we as the church need to not wait until the dust settles. We need to dive into the mess and, and love and serve our city. Um, so uh, I'd love to hear how you're doing that. I'd love to hear um, maybe what God's put on your heart. And if you're like, hey, I'd love to help. I don't know what to do. We've got options. Send me an email, jared.trumbo at vintagenc.com. Let's pray together. God, we love you, and we love your word, and we're challenged by this chapter of scripture. We're challenged because we look out and we see uh, those that feel outcast, and we see those that are lost, and we see those that are, uh, that are the homeless poor and those that are orphaned, and uh, we want to help, but we don't know how. We don't know what the next step is. God, would you give uh, our church boldness and courage to love this city and to love this world the way that you do. And God, for those that are discouraged, Lord, in your grace and in your kindness, would you, would you speak to them? Would you reveal your grace to them as you did for the foreigner and the eunuch in Isaiah 56? That you, that you welcome them, that you love them, that you wanna shower your grace on them, that you wanna reveal your goodness to them. Lord, we thank you for your church. Lord, use us. We pray this in Jesus' name, amen. As we respond to, to the gospel this morning, we, we respond in a few ways. Uh, that chapter talked a lot about covenant, about the, the foreigner and the eunuch holding fast to the covenant, the promises of God. That, that covenant language is also in, in communion. Uh, if you've not received communion elements yet, they're back at that table where the lamp is. Uh, go, ahead and, go ahead and grab those now uh, if you'd like to partake with us. Jesus took the bread and he, and he, as he gave it to his disciples, he said, this represents my body, which was given for you. And he took, uh, he took the cup and he said, this cup represents my blood, of my, the blood of the new covenant, of, of the new promise. And, and that covenant and that promise is for, is for all peoples and for all nations. It's for, it's for you, it's for me. We, the outcasts, have been brought in to a relationship with Jesus Christ through his blood. Praise the Lord for that. As we sing this first song, uh, we, will, we will partake of that together. And we sing, and we today will be joining with brothers and sisters in hundreds, thousands of different languages in all sorts of different settings, lifting our voices and our hearts and our souls to praise the one Jesus. That's an amazing thought. As, as, as one's sort of all the way on this side of the globe, we kind of were the last ones to do it on a Sunday, but, but praise the Lord that those in Asia and Europe and Africa have already done it and, and we followed them in that. Uh, and we wanna, we wanna pray for you. Uh, there should be a link 
um, up there if you want to snap one of those. Uh, if you're online, the link should be in the comments. You can fill out a prayer card or a connect card. Uh, we would love to pray for you. Um, if you'd like for it to just go to, uh, to the pastoral team, we will keep it. You can check that way. If you'd like for it to go to the prayer team, and we, we would love to pray for you on Wednesday at 7 o'clock a.m. Um, so fill out that card. And we give. That was the fourth one. Uh, we give because we want to we want to build the church of Jesus Christ that 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 welcomes people in with, with the gospel. We want to be a house of prayer for all nations. And so when you give, uh, we we're doing just that. Let's stand together and let's respond to the good news of Jesus Christ.
continue to have our eyes set on you. Thank you for our resurrection hope. together all the earth and all the earth will shout your praise our hearts will cry these bones will sing
There we go. Adjust that back up. Um, we are so glad, again, that you're here with us this morning, both here in person at Trinity Academy and those of you who have joined us online with Facebook Live. Uh, we have a couple of announcements this morning before we go. Uh, coming up on November 22nd, we have baby dedications. Uh, my family is excited. We get to uh, dedicate our littlest one, Daniel, who's born back in June. Um, if you are interested uh, in having your child dedicated, please speak to Jared Trumbo. You can email him again at jared.trumbo at vintagenc.com. Um, and also, as Jared mentioned before, uh, if you are new or have been coming here for a while and would like to find out more about how to get connected, uh, or if you have a prayer request that you would like to share either with the prayer team or with the, the other pastors, um, there's a link that we're putting up here. That QR code will take you where you need to go so you can either uh, fill out the connect card or share a prayer. Um, our benediction this morning comes from 1 Thessalonians 3, 12 through 13. And may the Lord make you increase and abound in love for one another and for all as we do for you so that he may establish your hearts blameless and holiness before our God and Father at the coming of our Lord Jesus with all his saints. Amen. Go in peace. leave your chairs uh, right where they are this morning. Uh, we will get those uh, sanitized and put back away. Thank you. Thank you.